Okay, so the colors of this new cloud I brought in, they match pretty well. The lighting doesn't quite match yet. I could go back to levels and I can limit the shadows a little bit. Right, as opposed to always just brightening it because I don't want to get to pure white. But the other way is to simply erase. And once I get rid of the hard edge with my soft edge to eraser at 100% opacity, then I can start fading it in at like a 50% opacity and kind of letting the, the two textures blend a little bit. This is more like clone stamping, just done with the eraser. And then I can create these very believable transitions. And it starts to suggest the ridge of my creature. And I can soften it in certain places at the top too. Clouds are more solid in some places and less so in others. It's really about edge control. That's the illusion we want. Now, computers are good at taking away hard edges. They're not good at putting them back in. So don't just soften to soften immediately. Okay, now I'm going to bring in another cloud reference. I think that's the one, the original one I used. Let's see. Yeah, so I don't need that one again. Here we go. This one's kind of small, but that's okay. As I enlarge it, as I shift its size, I might flip it horizontal. It's going to soften a little bit. And since clouds are soft anyway, that can be okay. And I'm just going to select all the blue. Big chunks of blue that I don't want. Yeah, I'll get rid of those later. And then I'm going to say select inverse. So it's all the stuff other than the blue and then duplicate command J. So that's another way I can cut it out. Now I select all the empty space around it with contiguous turned off. So it gets all these inside shapes too. So to be on the right layer, right? Then I use select and mask, keep my settings. I'm gonna be a little bit bolder and go to about a five pixel feather. A 10% shift. This is a good general setting for you and a five pixel radius. Remember settings. Say OK. So now look at what will happen to all this little debris. It's just going to go away as I saw. So that will save me a lot of work later. Now before I do too much else, I'm going to go to image and adjust the levels with the midtone, maybe brighten it a little bit, maybe limit the shadows a little bit, maybe even limit the highlights a little bit. Right. If this cloud was shot in kind of more contrasted light. Then I go to color balance. I'm gonna shift the midtones a little bit more towards yellow. I'm gonna shift the shadows a little bit more towards red. Starts to match my sky a little bit better. Then I use my big eraser. Oh, I need to go back to a full 100% opacity. Definitely get rid of these hard edges. And then kind of ghost the others. Start blending it in, using it where it's useful. There might even be some internal compositing I can do. So if I switch to a lower opacity eraser now, I can take just this chunk, which is kind of removed, and use it for my little tail. In fact, I can take that and I can duplicate it. to get it more opaque again, and then use it as my tail, like that, and then erase, and blend that in. Then 
then I could combine it back with my other layer. And I can see, okay, where is this useful? Well, it can be useful a little bit on the snout, around the eye. <laughs> Excuse me. Under the jaw. Let's go back to even lower opacity, about a quarter. At the top edge. And you're just doing cotton candy on top of cotton candy, right? You can even just take the whole opacity down a little bit. See where it's working, where it's not, and then kind of erase with that in mind. So go back up to a fuller opacity. And I don't want to erase that fully. And of course, I can warp it as well. So I think I might warp this up a little. And then I'm going to erase away from this soft edge Gaussian blur layer. Because I don't think all that softness is needed so much anymore. Warp this a little bit more, bring it up. So we're just pushing these clouds around. And blending these textures together. There we go. Okay, it's looking good. Okay, when you're doing a lot of erasing, especially a soft edge erasing on multiple layers, and you can build up a lot of layers, the Photoshop can start to uh, lag behind a little bit. It's a good time to save. And then, of course, you have dodging and burning as well. I'm going to go ahead and dodge this tail a little bit. So it shows up a little bit stronger. You can go back to earlier layers. Bring out some highlights just gently. Remember, it's a very strong tool, even at only 6% exposure. And as long as it's a soft edge dodge brush, you're not going to get in too much trouble. Okay, let's see, do I want to bring in another cloud? Yeah, why not? So I might use this with the tusk, just that little one, to show you all those steps again. Bring it to the top so I can see it clearly. Just going to select around what I want to use. Get lots of overlap. Duplicate it. Erase the smart layer. Select all the blue. Open the wrong layer again. Go to select and mask. Remember my settings. Hit OK. Oops. Select and mask, say OK, there it is, you can see it, delete, 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 use my big eraser, 100% opacity, 
big and soft. Get the hard edges out of there. From all my cutout. Nothing makes it not look like a cloud, like a hard edge. Like you took an exacto knife to it. Some of these soft, soft cloud edges, those are going to be helpful. And now I can take this. And I can use it, I can rotate it, Command T. I can use it to kind of suggest the tusks without being so obviously cut out. And now I gotta fix the levels. Limit the highlights somewhat, and then fix the color it a little bit and use color balance instead of hue saturation though I can do it with hue saturation too this gives me more kind of finesse push it a little bit more towards the yellows towards the reds and then I'm just going to hit it with a really gentle Gaussian blur so I can take the radius way down there we go And then I can erase it with lower opacities, very low, so I get lots of control. I can kind of push this one back, work on this side. And then maybe erase a little bit from my under layers. Let that really kind of soften. and warp this to fit the outline of my creature a little bit better. Now as I warp, it's, it's going to soften it a little bit anyway. So now what do I do with these hard edges here? Well, we're going to use a new tool. It's underneath the gradient tool. So we're using the eraser, we're using the gradient to paint the sky, and then we have what's called the smudge tool. And it's got blur and it's got sharpen. Don't worry too much about those. They're not very useful. But the smudge tool is incredibly useful. But you want to save before you do it. You want to use the smudge tool with a soft edged brush, just like we've done. I would do soft round pressure. You want it to be fairly large, but maybe half the size of what you do with your eraser. And you want its strength to be less than 30. And then what you do is you simply work on the edge and you kind of push. And it's like a blending tool with pastel. And what's great about it is you can extend the cloud and soften it out. Instead of Gaussian blurring it, you can kind of create a little windstorm of cloud. It's like blowing on the cloud. And you can do it on multiple layers. So let's see, I'm going to go to my base layer here. And I'm going to just push it out with the smudge tool on the edge. And you're going to see it's going to kind of selectively <coughs> soften it. And I can kind of push it into a more interesting, believable shape as well. I can work with softly erasing it. Smudge tool. Now if you overdo it, it's just like anything else. It becomes really obvious. But for shapes that are just too sharp, just aren't making sense, sometimes it's hard to know what layer they're coming from. Right? This can kind of soften it and yet incorporate it in a way that's believable. smudge tool. Now before we move on to the things that kind of the magic finishing with the um, clone stamp we want to make sure we have all the internal edges figured out. 